Episode 128 Convenience of Patriarch Mentor! A voice stopped Laura, who had been moving through the forest. She stopped in her tracks and lifted her beautiful eyes. A handsome youth was waving at her from a large piece of rock in the middle of the ruins. Seeing that David was fine, Laura heaved a sigh of relief. With a slight movement of her feet, she flashed nimbly like a butterfly and appeared beside David. Mentor, how did you find this place? David laughed brightly. Seeing David's messy clothes covered in dust and blood, Laura could not help but frown slightly. What happened? How did you suffer such a serious injury? I wonder too. That smelly old man brought me here for no reason and was chased by a large group of people. He threw me here. I was lucky, but I was almost killed in the aftermath of their battle, David replied gloomily. Lara already knew that those who rushed after them were the royal family's elite team. She guessed that the older man who took David away had something to do with that. Now, it seemed that David's injuries were a blessing in disguise. Master, it's good that you're here. I was worried I wouldn't be able to find a way back, David said with a casual smile. Looking at the gentle smile on David's face, Laura felt a little distracted. This young man's smile was quite similar to Bradley's. However, Laura soon returned to normal. Her beautiful eyes moved around as she said softly, It's getting late. Let's hurry back. All right, David nodded, and as he left, he turned his head back to look at the peak of one of the mountains. At the top of the mountain, a graceful and elegant figure stood beside the cliff. She watched David and Laura as they walked away, the corner of her lips slightly raised in a slight curve. We might meet again soon. The flaring mountain range was hazardous at night since it was deep in the forest with unknown danger lurking everywhere. However, with a core mentor like Laura by his side, David wasn't worried about any danger. As long as there were no beast kings, they could handle anything. Along the way, the two remained quiet. Even though David tried to strike up a conversation, in the end, he didn't know what to ask, so he had no choice but to give up. An entire night went by quietly, and when David and Laura returned to the Holy Bell City, it was already the second day's morning. Seeing the two return safely, all of the instructors and students in the Heavenly Star Marshal House let out a deep sigh of relief. Michael stepped forward and punched David in the chest. I thought I'd never see you again. I cried all night. David, who was injured, almost started bleeding again. Be gentler, David scolded. Michael, stop messing around. Mouse stopped him quickly and laughed. You cried all night? I didn't see a tear from you at all, okay? Junior Sister Zara cried all night. What are you talking about? Who was crying? Zara retorted with extreme dissatisfaction as she stared with red eyes. Senior Zara, your eyes betray you, Lee added. Shut up. Did I tell you to speak? Everyone kept arguing, and David felt like his head was hurting. However, he felt heartfelt warmth when he saw how everyone was concerned about him. Junior Brother David, Giant Elephant Marshall House and Superior Marshall House also found out about what happened the night before last. Yesterday, when we got back, Brian and June came over. They told me that we should report to them that you're safe if you came back, Mouse said. David nodded. I'll go. You still have injuries. Let little Lee go report. Zara said hurriedly. Why me? Do you have any objections? I... Lee couldn't help but pout when he saw Zara glaring at him, but he still nodded in satisfaction. I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> Michael's small eyes lit up mischievously. Little Lee, you can inform Brian. I'll go inform June. You? Before he could finish, Michael ran away and disappeared. The rest of the group broke out in a cold sweat, their heads hanging. Nearby, Laura watched the scene with a faint smile. Then Travis and a few other clan members of Holy Bell City arrived. Travis expressed his worry. Mentor Laura, are all of you all right? Laura nodded politely. Thank you for your concern. 
I'm fine. It's like this. Travis's gaze swept all of the instructors and students with the Heavenly Star Marshal House. He continued, The other teams of academics with high-level Marshal Houses that were invited have all arrived. The clan leader has asked me to inform you, so please head to the conference hall for a chat. The Patriarch summoned them? The moment Travis said this, everyone couldn't help but be surprised. Had Holy Bell City finally decided to inform them of their goal? Lara didn't hesitate. All right, I'll have to trouble you to lead the way. Under Travis's lead, Lara followed the Holy Bell City's Great Assembly Hall. The rest of the group wondered what would happen next. In a few moments, Lara arrived at an ancient courtyard house containing what could be said to be the most unique and luxurious building in Holy Bell City. Mentor Lara, please come in. Lara walked into the meeting hall. Lara discovered several other instructors with high-level martial houses in the main hall as she entered. These instructors were core mentors who were quite famous in Imperial Capital. Everyone was completely flabbergasted when they saw Lara. Even one or two people had faint looks of contempt in their eyes. Hehe, <laughs> so the people from Heavenly Star Marshall House have also come to join in on the fun? The one who spoke was a middle-aged man with a gloomy and cold appearance. From his coach's badge, it was clear he belonged to the Thunder Marshall House. His voice was full of mockery. Mentor Alec, what do you mean by this? Regarding teaching ability, Mentor Lara leaves you in the dust. The other middle-aged man seemed dissatisfied. Ha <laughs> ha, you don't need to stand up for her so quickly, Sean. I was talking casually. Sean was Giant Elephant Marshall House's core mentor and Brian's direct tutor. As everyone knew, Sean was a decisive and straightforward person. He spoke up for Lara because, among all the instructors present, she was the youngest and truest. And at 23 years old, she was actually around the same age as the most senior students from the major martial houses. In addition, Lara was known for her outstanding teaching skills. Therefore, a few of the older instructors admired her quite a bit. There was nothing abnormal with him speaking up for Lara. However, Lara's expression did not change even a little when she saw the various gazes from the crowd. Her gaze was directed at the lady in black, who sat in the first seat on the upper left. The girl in black was about 25 or 26 years old. Other than Laura, she was the youngest teacher in the group. Her elegant face was indifferent. She sat quietly, playing with a jade flute between her slender fingers. Why is mentor Laura looking at me like that? The woman in black spoke in a light tone as she met Laura's gaze. That seemingly nonchalant gaze contained a hint of coldness. Everyone around was stunned. Even Sean from the giant elephant Marshall House had a solemn face. Taylor, Royal Marshall College's core mentor in terms of status, fame, or ability to supervise, she was one of the top Marshall House instructors in Imperial Capital City. Moreover, she was also a high-level pattern master. Few would dare to provoke a high-level pattern master. A pattern master's strength was reflected in her influence. In the past few years, Royal Marshall College had firmly dominated the top position of the higher Marshall Houses, which had quite a bit to do with Mentor Taylor. It's nothing, Lara replied indifferently before taking a seat. Hum. Taylor smiled faintly as a cold glint flashed across her eyes. Anyone could tell that there was a hidden grudge between Lara and Taylor. Of course, that sort of thing was their business. The others didn't bother to understand it. Soon the sound of light footsteps could be heard outside the door, along with the dull thud of crutches against the stone. Everyone's hearts froze before an old man appeared before them. He was a haggard old man with a wrinkled face. His eyes were cloudy, and his lean figure gave the impression that he was on the verge of death. Patriarch! Travis and the rest of the Holy Bell City people knelt down respectfully. Aside from Helen... All the other Marshall House instructors stood up with their hands cupped together, a simple gesture. Patriarch, there's no need to stand on ceremony. Take a seat, take a seat. The old man raised his hand and said. At the same time, boundless pressure came from his body, and everyone was shocked.
Episode 129 Transactions There's no need to stand on ceremony. Take a seat. Take a seat. Sensing the aura emitted from the Patriarch of the Holy Bell City, all the instructors in the hall were shocked. This withered old man possessed an extremely high cultivation. Even the Royal Marshall College Corps mentor, unconcerned a moment ago, revealed a trace of surprise. The Holy Bell City Patriarch staggered into the conference hall as everyone watched. At that slow pace, even a toddler was faster than him. I am Gregory Shields, the fifth generation Patriarch of Holy Bell City. The old man took the lead and gave a simple introduction. I wonder why Patriarch Shields wants us here. Reginald, the teacher leading Wintervale Marshall House, got down to business. The other instructors also had puzzled looks on their faces. Chief Shields nodded his head, raised his right hand, and gestured for everyone to sit down. Everyone, don't worry. We'll need to start with the origin of Holy Bell City. I hope you don't mind me being long-winded. <laughs> you must be joking, Chief Shields. We also wish to know everything about this matter. Core Mentor Anderson, the giant elephant Marshall Houseman, laughed loudly. Thank you. Chief Shield smiled, revealing two rows of broken teeth behind his shriveled lips. The first generation founder of our Holy Bell City was named Josiah Shields. More than 200 years ago, Josiah Shields was tired of worldly disputes and cruelty, so he came to the Stone Village, which was only a few dozen households old. Originally, he wanted to stay in Stone Village for a few days. He didn't expect to stay here for the rest of his life. The simplicity and enthusiasm of the villagers in Stone Village attracted him. Slowly, Josiah planted roots in Stone Village and married a girl with a blue heart. He also raised his descendants. Because Stone Village was connected to the flaring mountain range, the villagers' main source of livelihood was to hunt low-level wild beasts and grow crops. But Josiah was powerful. Under his leadership, the lives of Stone Village's villagers became more abundant. After some time, Josiah had gathered the residents of the other nearby villages together and created the Holy Bell City. Speaking of the history of Holy Bell City, Chief Shield's old face was moved, and his muddy old eyes blossomed with a trace of bright light. Sean, Reginald, and the other instructors nodded their heads. Creating a city in a place filled with demonic beasts like the Flaring Mountain Range was indeed a skill. Under Patriarch Josiah's leadership, our lives became more abundant, Chief Shields continued. To avoid the demonic beasts' attacks, Josiah began to teach the village's younger generation martial arts. In addition to the martial arts, there was also the technique of rune. Oh? Patriarch Josiah was also a pattern master? A teacher with a martial house asked. Ha <laughs> ha! Chief Shields grinned. His old eyes were full of respect. Patriarch Josiah was not only pattern master, but also a spiritual pattern master. What? Spiritual pattern master? Boom! At those words, everyone was shocked. Even Helen who had been indifferent the entire time, could not keep herself from frowning. Spiritual Pattern Master, the abbreviation for Spirit Level Pattern Master. It was above the High Level Pattern Master and was similar to the space-breaking stage cultivators. Although Spiritual Pattern Master and Top Powerhouse of Space-Breaking Stage had the same strength, their positions differed. For example, the Pattern Master was at the core of the fields of setting up formations, refining pills, crafting tools, and many others. Only a crafting master like a spiritual pattern master could create a spiritual artifact everyone desired. A spiritual pattern master's influence was terrifying. In the entire Holy Star Dynasty, there was only a spiritual pattern master and his position was unrivaled. Even the people from the royal family who were in the highest position had to be respectful of him. And this old man in front of them just said the Holy Bell City's first-generation patriarch was a spiritual pattern master. Everyone was shocked, but they found it hard to believe more than that. 
<laughs> I know that everyone has some doubts, but you should have heard of a pattern master. A few years ago, he left Holy Bell City and had become quite a good person. The group reacted immediately upon hearing those words. They had heard quite a bit about a pattern master coming from the Holy Bell City in the past few decades. However, the majority of the people treated it as a rumor and didn't pursue it seriously. After all, Holy Bell City and the outside world were separated, and in the eyes of the common people, it was a backwater. But now that they thought about it, not all of the information was baseless. Chief Shields, please continue. Sean raised his hand slightly and said, Although Patriarch Josiah Shields teaches the younger generation martial arts, his main goal is for everyone to protect the tribe and have the ability to protect themselves when they meet demonic beasts. Therefore, Patriarch Josiah Shields warned everyone repeatedly not to leave the tribe. Although the outside world is beautiful, there are many skeletons in the closet. Josiah Shields took root in Stone Village because he was tired of the deceit and ruthlessness outside. Thus, he naturally didn't wish for his descendants to go out wandering. However, arrogant juniors could not suppress their yearning for the sky outside. The grass was greener on the other side, after all. So the instant Patriarch Josiah Shields left, the yearning suppressed in their hearts exploded. Many of the younger generations that had learned the martial arts power and runic techniques left the village. Before they left, each one said they would return in the future. However, in reality, not a single person who walked out of the Holy Bell City had returned. No one came back, Chief Shields muttered three times. The old man's expression was a little lonely and sad, and Travis and the others behind him also lowered their heads in silence. The instructors also became quiet. Although they felt pity for the Holy Bell City, they still had little understanding of it. This ancient city was indeed too different from Imperial Capital City. I don't blame them. Everyone has the right to choose their own life. Chief Shield sighed softly and continued. However, they left the tribe after mastering their skills, and the older generation returns to the dust one after another, so no child of the next generation can receive complete guidance. Patriarch Josiah Shield's bitter inheritance formed a fault. Originally, the power of the martial arts and the skills of the rune was passed down from generation to generation, but due to the young genius's departure, the system was destroyed. Two hundred years passed, and today no one could find a pattern master in Holy Bell City anymore. Furthermore, they were all low-level, self-taught pattern masters. Since they relied on their training under unknown circumstances, they didn't dare to carelessly teach the next generation. After hearing Chief Shield's story, everyone finally understood the situation. The Holy Bell City had flourished for hundreds of years, and its fall from its golden age to its current state caused listeners to sigh. So, Chief Shields, why did you call us here? Reginald asked, nodding slightly. The reason I called you all here is simple. It's because I want to discuss a condition. Oh? Everyone was surprised. When Patriarch Josiah Shields died, he left behind a treasure. This treasure was called the Illusory Spiritual Bell, and the Illusory Spiritual Bell contained a shocking amount of power. Every time the Illusory Spiritual Bell opens, it can communicate with the spirit of the bell to obtain a strong power. If someone is lucky, there's a small chance of opening up stage palace and condensing a path seed. What? Upon hearing these words, the teachers could no longer maintain their composure. Even though Laura stayed silent, there was movement in her soft eyes. He'd opened up his stage palace and formed a path seat. This was the same as stepping into the ranks of a pattern master's entry-level disciples. If any high-level martial house could cultivate two or three pattern masters, that would be a major event that would cause the entire Holy Star dynasty to tremble. Of course, Chief Shields also said that there was a small chance, if you were lucky, so the probability of success was low. This showed how difficult it was to become a pattern master. To be honest, I don't think any of the students you brought along could accomplish it, 
but the illusory spiritual bell contains many occult arts that were passed down by our ancestors, Chief Shield said lightly. All the teachers looked at each other, their curiosity peaked. Sean took a step forward and said, what would the chief like us to exchange? It's simple. As long as you allow our Holy Bell City's younger generation to practice martial arts, the strength of the illusory spiritual bell will be shared with your students. Oh? Everyone was even more surprised. The Holy Bell City's younger generation wanted to enter the Imperial Capital's major high-level martial houses? Wasn't that a contradiction? Just a moment ago, the chief had said that Josiah Shields didn't want his descendants to leave and now he actively proposed to go to the high-level martial houses in Imperial Capital City. It didn't make sense. Chief Shields saw the doubt in everyone's eyes and replied helplessly, I've done this because I have no choice. The loss of the others was enough to make Holy Bell City lose its strength. If this goes on, it will only get weaker and weaker, and one day we'll perish from the world. Chief Shields changed topics as a trace of determination flashed throughout his cloudy eyes. So I hope that the young generation in this city will accept formal guidance and become stronger. Although this goes against Patriarch Josiah's original intention, it's better than destroying the Holy Bell City he painstakingly built up. Episode 130 Sun, Flame, Body After listening to Holy Bell City Patriarch Shield's explanation, the high-level martial house instructors finally understood the issue. First-generation Patriarch Josiah left behind a treasure called the Illusory Spiritual Bell, which contained much power. In exchange for this power, Shields wanted the younger generation of his clan to enter the higher-level martial houses in Imperial Capital City to receive formal guidance for cultivation. This was something he had to do. After all, if this were to continue, there would be a day when the Holy Bell City would be reduced to an ordinary hunting village. Although the illusory spiritual bell contained the power and inheritance Josiah had left behind, it was difficult to unearth the power without the help of a professional. The role of a good teacher was to prevent younger students from taking any detours. To be a self-taught student, one had to put in effort on their own. And even with time spent, one might still deviate from the right path. The people present were all core mentors who had a high-level martial house behind them. A core mentor's authority was quite broad, and there were many things that they could decide on in place of the higher-ups in the martial house. For example, they could recruit extra students. Which martial house would the nobles' young generation like to enter? Giant Elephant Martial House's Sean spoke, which meant he was extremely interested in the illusory spiritual bell. If his disciples could become spiritual pattern masters, the power from Josiah's illusory spiritual bell would benefit Sean and the entire giant elephant martial house. Shield's cloudy eyes swept across the instructors on both sides of the hall. He hadn't invited all of the high-level martial houses in Imperial Capital City, just the teams of academies training in the area. It just so happened that among the five great high-level martial house, there were giant elephant Wintervale, Fire Dragon, and Superior. The only one that was a little surprising was Heavenly Star. Of course, Shields didn't have a specific standard for who was good and bad. His dry lips moved and he said, I hope all of the high-level martial houses present here can become our choice in Holy Bell City, and the younger generation will decide where they want to go. At this, the teachers could not help but secretly shake their heads. Martial houses had always selected students in the past, but now it was a student's choice. Moreover, they got to choose at will from the nearly ten martial houses, including the most famous five great academies. Major martial houses had their standards of education. If the Holy Bell City dispersed its young generation among them, it would be like gathering hundreds of different clan leaders. But this wasn't too big of a deal for the martial houses. After all, each martial house had many students. 
This was just adding a few more people to the number, and the difference was nothing more than exempting the Holy Bell City from the examination. As for whether or not they would be able to become proficient would depend on the younger generation themselves. Are there any other conditions? A faint female voice asked. Everyone's gaze swept toward the Royal Marshall College's instructor, Taylor. From the beginning, she'd been nonchalant, as if this matter had nothing to do with her. But when she heard that the first-generation patriarch Josiah was a spiritual pattern master, her cold and elegant face showed more interest. <laughs> the condition is if the Holy Bell City meets with danger in the future, such as a demonic beast invasion or evil intruders. I hope the great academies will help us out. Wow. After Shields said this, all the teachers were stunned. The old man was thick-skinned. He was saying that all major martial houses would be used as support teams for the Holy Bell City in the future. Hmph. <laughs> Don't you think the conditions are a bit presumptuous? Taylor did not give the chief any respect as she spoke in a cold tone. Shields wasn't angry, and a trace of a smile appeared on his wrinkled face. If all we did was ask for help, there'd be something wrong with that. But we can promise you this. Wherever the illusory spiritual bell opens in the future, you can bring all your Marshall House students here. There's just a limit to the number of participants. Everyone's expressions eased up a little. The old man had a bit of conscience. What is everyone here thinking? Shields asked. All the instructors looked at each other, and Taylor, with the Royal Marshall College, spoke up first. All right, the Royal Marshall College agrees to this. The giant elephant Marshall House agrees as well. Does Consonance Marshall House have any suggestions? Bright Moon College is also interested in the illusory spiritual bell. Wintervale Marshall House agrees. All the instructors, including the Heavenly Star Marshall House's Laura, made their decision very quickly. After all, anyone who could become a member of the core group of high-level Marshall Houses would not be an ordinary person. With the description of the benefits, everyone made a decision. If that is the case, then today's verbal agreement will affect. Tomorrow morning, I will open the sacred bell plaza myself. Although a simple verbal agreement was one of the least guarantees, Shields wasn't worried that the high-level martial houses of Imperial Capital City would violate the agreement. The coaches greeted each other briefly before leaving one after another. Not long after she walked out of the hall, a pair of ice-cold eyes fell on Laura's back like a stealthy arrow. Laura's footsteps halted as her beautiful eyes glanced at Taylor not far behind her. You got lucky yesterday, but you won't be so lucky next time. Taylor's eyes were chilly as she spoke in a low, cold voice. Laura gripped her hands as coldness flashed across her beautiful face. What is it? Do you want to kill me? Laura said with a faint smile. If I wanted to kill you, how would you still be alive? Laura's voice was calm, without a single tremor. But it seems like you're the one who almost died yesterday. That was just the power of the talisman array. I could take your life within ten moves if you faced me now. Do you want to try? Sensing the coldness Laura's eyes emitted, Taylor also became frosty. Although she was a high-level pattern master, her cultivation in the martial arts was still slightly weaker than Laura's. If Taylor had used the talisman array technique, she might have been able to defeat Laura. But the two of them stood there facing each other, and Laura would not give her the time to set up the talisman array. This was the difference between a martial cultivator and a pattern master. Next time, I won't show mercy. Laura gave a cold warning, and with that, she turned and left. Taylor's face became ugly, trading its elegance for a thick layer of frost. You won't be soft-hearted anymore, and I definitely won't make the same mistake again. After Laura returned, the instructors and students at the Heavenly Star Marshall House burst into an uproar. They never thought there would be such a prize from coming to Holy Bell City. Excited, everyone started to adjust themselves, preparing for the illusory spiritual bell to open the next day. Zara, Laura suddenly called out. What's wrong, mentor? 
Where's David? David is resting in the room. Mentor Jamal has checked on him, and there's nothing wrong. What business do you have with him? It's fine. Go and busy yourself with what you need to do. Oh, okay. Zara watched Laura leave, feeling a little weird. Mentor Laura had never asked about a student like that before. Did something happen outside between David and Laura? At that moment, David, who had just finished taking care of his internal breathing, had changed into a clean set of clothes. Thinking about what had happened in the past two days, he felt it was quite dangerous. In the future, it is better not to mess around too much. Luckily, this time he'd run into Quinn. If he were to run into anyone else, he'd have no chance of surviving. David was more curious about Quinn's identity. We should have a chance to meet again in the future, David murmured to himself. With a thought, a brown patterned storage ring appeared in David's hand. This storage ring was what he took from Blood Ghost's severed arm. I chased you for a whole night and almost got killed by you. That's a bit of compensation. David had already roughly checked the ring. The Butcher Blood Ghost collection was not small. The number of high-grade elemental crystal stones alone was over a thousand. A thousand high-grade elemental crystal stones, equivalent to a hundred thousand middle-grade elemental crystal stones. At the Youth Academy in Oakburn City, David only received two or three pieces of middle-grade elemental crystal stones each month. A hundred thousand versus two. This difference was unimaginable. He'd never known how big the outside world was. Now that he thought about it, he was once just a frog in a well in Oakburn City. After a brief sigh, David took out a big bottle and placed it on the table. He could see it was filled with dark red blood through the transparent glass. As he touched the bottle, a scorching heat met the tip of his fingers. This must be the bull-headed rhinoceros blood. As David understood it, the Butcher Blood Ghost kidnapped Zara to serve as bait for the bull-headed rhinoceros so he could get its blood. But what was Blood Ghost's purpose in collecting the bull-headed rhinoceros blood? David sent his consciousness into the storage ring to check again. Not long after, a dark red scroll appeared in David's hand. As he held the scroll in his hand, he could feel a scorching heat spreading out from it. With curiosity, David opened the scroll slowly and saw that the opening page read, Sun Flame Body Refining Technique. Sun Flame Body Refining Technique. David was startled and looked behind himself. The Sun Flame Body Refining Technique can be upgraded to a body tempering martial art. When it is mastered to the small success stage, it can be surrounded by illusions and flames. The stronger the body, the better it can resist blades and swords. When the practitioner reaches mastery, his defense is extraordinary. The astral energy of his bones could split a spiritual artifact. A spiritual artifact? David's eyelids twitched as he saw those words, and his heart skipped a beat. He had never heard of a body transformation martial art that could fight against a spiritual artifact. He had picked up a treasure. Episode 131, Seven Star Points The Sun Flame Body Refining Technique The strength of the body, able to resist blades and swords The astral energy of the bones, able to split spiritual artifacts An absolute treasure David was overjoyed He hadn't expected the storage ring of the butcher blood ghost would hide such a powerful body tempering technique and the Sun Flame Body Refining Technique was an upgradable body tempering martial art. Upgradable body tempering martial arts didn't have a specific level. They were neither Essence Mastering Realm martial arts nor Core Transforming Stage Realm martial arts. These kinds of defensive martial arts, which burst forth with power, were completely based on the growth of the cultivator's strength. However, there was no clear indication of how high the enhancement level would be. Since it was a body tempering martial art that could be upgraded, David, who was at the sixth level of essence mastering, could cultivate this martial art. 
David also discovered that the sun flame body refining technique had to be drawn out using the fire demonic beast blood. It had to be blood from a fire attribute spiritual beast that was comparable to a human cultivator of the core transforming stage realm. The blood of the spiritual beast was smeared all over his body, and the power of fire from the beast's blood could strengthen his muscles and bones, thus allowing him to train in this martial art. No wonder Blood Ghost wanted to collect the blood of that bull-headed rhinoceros, so that's how it is. David realized that Blood Ghost had put in a lot of effort to cultivate the sun flame body refining technique. His only mistake was being muddle-headed and underestimating David's strength, causing him to lose his life in the end. Now David would take advantage of all the items. <laughs> this trip to the flaring mountain range sure is worth it. Once I return to the Heavenly Star Marshal House, I'll begin to study and cultivate this technique. David was in no hurry to study the content. After all, it was not the right time to cultivate in the current situation. He put the scroll and the beast blood back into the storage ring, then returned to his bed and circulated the strength of true essence in his body to enter a cultivation state. The vigorous strength of true essence began to circulate within David's body, and the power of the holy body of demon eye and body of chaos flowed through David's eight extraordinary meridians. Soon after, David felt that the inside of his body was warm, as if he were running in a hot spring. With a thought, a clear and bright high-grade elemental crystal stone appeared on his right palm. Large amounts of pure spiritual energy flowed into David's body like a river. The spirit energy contained within a high-grade elemental crystal stone could not be compared to that of a middle-grade or elemental crystal stone. The difference between them was nearly a hundred times greater. David started to absorb the spiritual energy faster. He wasn't short of money right now, with more than 1,000 high-grade elemental crystal stones, so it would be enough for three years if he consumed one per day. Moreover, a single high-grade elemental crystal stone would take more than one day to consume. Buzz! Buzz! David was quickly enveloped in a dense layer of spiritual energy. The spiritual energy gradually entering the golden fog lingered around David's body and flowed into him. Suddenly, he detected a strange energy fluctuation. This power was unfamiliar. It was coming from David's left palm, and it had never appeared before. What's that? David was slightly startled. He used his soul consciousness to sense where the power was. He sensed seven peculiar light dots. Seven light dots were arranged in a battle formation in the hazy, gloomy, and blurry world. They were as bright as the brightest stars in the night sky. This? David was stunned. Weren't these the seven light dots imprinted in his heart after he opened the heavenly book of Holy Star? But that had disappeared. Why did it appear again? David's reaction was quick. The seven light spots hadn't disappeared. Instead, they had all merged into his body. What exactly was the greatest secret of the so-called Holy Star Dynasty? David could vaguely feel that the seven stars contained a strange power. After a brief moment of hesitation, David fused his true energy perception into the seven stars. His perception seemed to have touched an invisible wall, and he could not probe further. He used a sliver of the strength of demonic eye to probe. Buzz, buzz. In a split second, when David received the power of the blood lineage of the Holy Body's boundary, the seven stars released a blinding light. Seven stars appeared on David's left palm, and at the same time, an overbearing power manifested in David's body. Wow! A dense wave of energy was released from David's body, causing the bed to shake uneasily. David opened his eyes and tried to control the power released by the seven stars. The frantic and restless silver shine gathered and overlapped on David's palm. It seemed as if it was an essence formed from condensed starlight. 
the seven stars in his palm flickered and dimmed as if they were twinkling in the night sky. No, I can't control it. David was shocked. He raised his hand and threw a palm. The uncontrollable force in the palm turned into a silver beam of light and struck the stone table in front of him. Bam! A heavy shock wave exploded in David's room. As he watched, astonished, the rock table was smashed into powder. A wave of energy swept out in all directions, causing the house to shake. Damn, what's going on? Michael's voice came from outside the door. Who's tearing down the house? I don't know, but it seems to have come from Junior Brother David's room. Many Heavenly Star Marshall House students were alarmed and ran out of their rooms, looking at each other in dismay. Mouse knocked on the door. Junior Brother David, what happened to you? David, who'd been stunned for a moment, quickly replied, Oh, I'm fine. I accidentally overturned the table. Accidentally overturned the table? Who was he trying to fool? No overturned table would cause such a commotion. Michael, standing outside the door, couldn't help but squint. He was shocked to find the wall had started to crack slightly. What the hell is this guy doing? Michael said. Luckily, Holy Bell City's building was sturdy, but a normal building would have collapsed just now. Michael didn't mention what he found to keep David from more trouble. It's okay, it's okay. I think he was tossing and turning and fell out of bed. Everyone goes on, go on. Michael waved to disperse the crowd. No one thought any more of it as they turned around and left. David was slightly relieved when he heard the crowd leave. His entire left arm was trembling faintly. He looked at the stone table smashed to smithereens and his heart was full of shock. This power was terrifying. I'm afraid the destructive power of that beam of light is almost at the level of a core transforming stage expert. David even started to wonder if he had created it himself. Was this the greatest secret of the Holy Star Dynasty? David took a deep breath and looked down at the seven stars that dimmed and gradually disappeared, his eyes serious. This could not be leaked to anyone. Although the power was strong, it was not something David could control. David felt like his entire left arm was weak and powerless. I have to be more careful in the future, David murmured. Then he raised his handsome eyebrows and a bright light flashed in his eyes. Once he grasped this strange power, it would be his trump card in the future. Thinking of that, David couldn't help but feel grateful toward Quinn. Logically speaking, Anyone who spied on the greatest secret of the Holy Star Dynasty would undoubtedly die. Quinn knew that David might have seen the heavenly book of Holy Star, but she still let him go. That moved David greatly. David calmed the emotions in his heart and went back into cultivation. This time, he absorbed the elemental crystal stone's spirit energy to cultivate he'd be able to study the secret of the seven star points later once his cultivation had risen again. The sun and moon rotated, and the sky above the Holy Bell City was dotted with billions of stars. A meteor streaked across the beautiful night sky from time to time. Sometimes life was like a meteor in the night sky, short and hurry, burning away for a single gorgeous moment. Whew! David who had been cultivating until midnight, slowly opened his eyes. The dense spiritual energy filled his body, and the foundation of the sixth stage of essence mastering had become much more stable. The high-grade elemental crystal stone in his palm was still resplendent. After half a day, he had only absorbed about a tenth of the energy inside. Although it was one-tenth, it was still equivalent to the total energy stored within the 10 middle-grade elemental crystal stones. This discovery was huge compared to David's two middle-grade elemental crystal stones from before. The higher the level, the more elemental crystal stones one would need. At that time, it wouldn't have been strange for him to use one or two high-grade elemental crystal stones. But David didn't have to worry about that right now. After being cooped up in his room for the whole day, David wanted to go for a walk outside. He got out of bed and opened the door. 
The tranquility of the night and the cool air rushed at him. The stars in the sky were bright and beautiful, and the buzzing of the insects echoed in the night, causing David to take a step forward. The illusory spiritual bells opened tomorrow for the Holy Bell City, so almost everyone went to sleep early. They needed to replenish their energy and make preparations. However, a black shadow appeared in David's line of sight at that moment. He walked forward slowly and saw that the person was squatting on the ground with a small and exquisite mouse in his hand. The mouse was not even the size of a fist, and its gray and white fur was cute. But in fact, this was a rodent, and its sharp teeth could easily bite through an adult's throat. David raised his eyebrows and called out in surprise, Seen your brother Henry? Episode 132 Bloodline David called out to the black shadow in front of him in surprise. Seen your brother Henry? Henry was stunned at first, but then he turned around awkwardly. Junior brother David, it's so late. You're still awake? I'm going out for a walk. But what about you? What are you doing here so late? David smiled as he walked forward. Mouse put his hands flat on the ground, and the little gold biter rat hopped onto the ground, turned around, and disappeared into the night. Mouse stood up and shook his head. I can't fall asleep. What's on your mind? David could vaguely see the disappointment in Mouse's eyes. No, nothing. There is no need to hide anything from me. What's going on? Is your elemental crystal stone not enough for you to cultivate? Enough, enough. Mouse waved his hand. When you threw Jace's 200 high-grade elemental crystal stones away the other day, Michael and I picked up many of them. Then why can't you sleep? Mouse sighed helplessly and said with a wry smile, It's not a big deal. I just feel like I'm too stupid. With this many elemental crystal stones and the elemental blood fruit you gave us, everyone can break through, and I'm stuck. David tried to comfort him. You can't rush things. Perhaps the chance to break through will come in a few days. Hey, you don't have to comfort me anymore. I know what I'm worth. It took me two years longer than others to enter Bright Moon College. I thought I was friends with all of you, which made me happy but I'm feeling more and more useless right now. You are getting stronger, and I'm still so weak. Mouse had a lonely expression. Ever since he and Michael were almost cheated and killed by a few people from the Royal Marshal College, Mouse had been thinking, and now he'd lost much of his former confidence. Don't give up on yourself so quickly. David patted Henry's shoulder and encouraged him hesitantly. When we go back, I'll see which coaches are suitable to teach you. I'm so stupid, I don't think anyone could teach. Strange thief-like laughter sounded out. <laughs> they couldn't teach you, but it's not because you're so stupid, it's because they're useless. Who was that? David and Mouse were shocked. Shua! A strong wave of air attacked them. Then a gray-haired old man was sitting on a stone block in front of them. The old man's small eyes, similar to peanuts, flashed with an unknown light source. Damkin, it's you, you old bastard. David cursed and stepped forward, gesturing for Mouse to step back. What are you talking about? Do you have no morals? Shouldn't you respect the elderly? The old man jumped up and swore with his eyes wide. David also looked rather angry. You almost killed me, you know. Hehe, <laughs> aren't you still alive? The old man snickered. The person who came was none other than the mysterious expert who'd taken David away and requested that he plunder the heavenly book of Holy Star, the rat-robbing divine thief. David hadn't expected this old guy to have the boldness to show up. Senior, what did you just say? Mouse looked at rat-robbing divine thief in surprise. He didn't know why, but this old man gave him a feeling of closeness and gentleness that originated from his bones and bloodline. Not bad, not bad. The rat-robbing divine thief looked at Mouse in satisfaction. 
Don't you think we look similar, little guy? Similar? David's heart skipped a beat. If you look closely, the rat-robbing divine thief and mouse looked similar, especially those eyes as small as peanuts. They seemed to be carved out of the same mold. Old man, is mouse your illegitimate child? No, son of an illegitimate child. Pfft. The rat-robbing divine thief was fuming. Don't you think I'd know if I were sowing wild oats? Maybe not. Who knows how you were when you were young? Hump. The rat-robbing divine thief snorted and then continued to speak to Mouse. Little guy, no one could teach you how to live in the imperial capital. Why not? Mouse asked. Because your boundary of blood lineage is different from ordinary people's. Do you know what our boundary of blood lineage is? Of course, I can smell the rat in your bones from a distance. <laughs> this is fate. I was worried I wouldn't be able to find an heir in my lifetime. But unexpectedly, that little girl from the royal family chased me here and even let me pick up a successor. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> the rat-robbing divine thief's words made Mouse a little confused. David listened clearly. He focused his eyes and said coldly, Senior, I hope you're not lying. Lying? Are you? What are you trying to do? David had been deceived once before, and now he almost didn't believe the rat-robbing divine thief's words. Hm, this nasty guy dares to doubt me. I won't be able to convince you unless I show some evidence. Buzz, buzz. Before the rat-robbing divine thief finished his sentence, a light power fluctuation and a bright golden light appeared in the air. All that could be seen as the faint image of a mouse in front of the rat-robbing divine thief. This rat had shiny golden fur, and it looked like a weasel. Its two front teeth were as sharp as guillotines. The feeling it gave off was not weak and lowly, but rather that of a powerful rat. This, this, this is... Upon seeing the illusion of the rat, Mouse's eyes opened wide and he seemed to be incoherent. Hehe, <laughs> how's that? The rat-robbing divine thief snickered. Mouse clenched his fist and then released a hidden aura. The image of a weasel also appeared in front of him. David's pupils contracted. Mouse's weasel phantom was almost the same as the rat-robbing divine thief's. However, their auras were as different as the sky and the earth. How's that? Do you believe me now? The rat-robbing divine thief withdrew his strength of true essence, and the figure in front of him disappeared. The rat-robbing divine thief looked at the shocked mouse with interest. Do you know what kind of boundary of blood lineage this is, little guy? A mouse, mouse replied. What mouse? This is a sky-stealing mouse, short for Sky Mouse Boundary of Blood Lineage, a profound body. Do you understand? You are an effing genius. Do you think those trash high martial houses are worthy of teaching you? The rat-robbing divine thief's tone was filled with excitement. When David and Mouse heard this, they felt like they were struck by lightning as all kinds of emotions surged in their hearts. Pro profound body? The mouse was so shocked that he was stuttering. His small eyes widened like they never had before and almost popped out of his sockets. Profound body. What kind of concept was this? Above the war body and below the sacred body. In the vast Holy Star Dynasty, all those who possessed profound bodies were well-known figures, and the birth of a profound body would attract the attention of the entire empire. Inborn profound body? Stealing the celestial mouse boundary of blood lineage? David, who had calmed down, was thinking about the authenticity of this matter. A strong warrior like the rat-robbing divine thief had a strong sense of perception toward boundary of blood lineages similar to his. Seeing the afterimages formed by both sides, the boundary of blood lineage they possessed might have been of the same type. And the rat-robbing divine thief didn't know mouse, so this should be his first time meeting him. These reasons meant the rat-robbing divine thief wasn't lying. Even so, David was still worried about what would happen next. Little guy, come with me, rat-robbing divine thief said. 
David clenched his fists and said, What are you trying to do? <laughs> I heard what you just said. I said it before. The celestial mouse boundary of blood lineage is a special kind of profound body, and ordinary people can't unearth its power. If he were to stay in that academy, the strength of his bloodline would be wasted. The only person who can help him is me. The rat-robbing divine thief paused for a second and looked at Mouse seriously. Of course, I'm old too, and I thought of finding someone to inherit my mantle. And since you also have the bloodline of the sneak Celestial Mouse, you're the most suitable. No one knows better than me how to teach you to use the power of your bloodline. Hearing these words, Mouse fell into deep thought. David looked at the rat-robbing divine thief, and his clear eyes gradually became sharp and deep. At the same time, an obscure purple luster appeared in the depths of his pupils. Buzz, buzz. The next moment, the rat-robbing divine thief frowned as he felt formless energy probing his heart. Kid, you're also a hidden master? Don't be angry, senior rodent. David kept his strength of demonic eye and said, I believe what you said, but I sincerely request that you respect senior brother Henry's own decision. The rat-robbing divine thief squinted his eyes and looked at David meaningfully. Just now, he had felt as if someone had seen through him. He had never experienced this feeling before, but the person standing in front of him was a young man who had yet to reach his prime. This surprised the rat-robbing divine thief. It seems there are quite some talented people in the Holy Star Dynasty. Senior, you flattered me. What I've used are merely insignificant tricks and cannot be considered anything more elegant. Hump! The rat-robbing divine thief snorted lightly and said to Mouse, Little rascal, you should consider it carefully. Then he paused, reached his hand toward David, and opened his palm. Bring me what I want. Episode 133 Mouse Decision Bring me what I want. While leaving Mouse to his thoughts, the rat-robbing divine thief stretched his right hand toward David. David was stunned and then asked, as if he didn't know the answer. What is it? Don't pretend, you nasty guy. What are you talking about? I went through so much trouble just to deal with that little girl. Don't tell me you didn't manage to get anything from her. You have the nerve to say that? David got angry. This old man wanted him to copy the most confidential ancient book of the royal family, the Heavenly Book of Holy Star, and even had a large group of royal experts come and try to kill him. He didn't care about David's safety at all. The most disgusting thing was David was almost killed by the aftershock from the heavenly lightning summoning, and this old man didn't save him. If it wasn't because him running into Quinn, David could have been dead by now. <laughs> Why are you so embarrassed? What else would my purpose in coming here be? The rat-robbing divine thief smiled evilly. David sighed and shook his head. He had to admit the old man's skin was thick to being shameless. David pretended to ask helplessly, Don't you think those people will kill me if I get it? The rat-robbing divine thief was slightly startled that it was true. If David plundered the heavenly book of Holy Star, there was an 80 to 90% chance the royal dark team would not let him live. The rat-robbing divine thief rolled his eyes and laughed strangely. Hehe, <laughs> that's not necessarily true. I saw the little girl save you with my own eyes. Do you know her? Since she saved you, she won't kill you. If you've already gotten the contents, little fella, leave it to me. I said I would give you a spiritual artifact as compensation. I want the spiritual artifact too, David sighed helplessly. If you want to blame something, you can only blame yourself, old senior. Blame me for what? Don't you know there are restrictions on that thing? I worked on it for most of the day, but I couldn't open it, let alone read its contents. My God, the rat-robbing divine thief couldn't help slapping his thigh. I forgot about that. How silly. I was confused. Seeing the rat-robbing divine thief's regretful look, 
David was happy. The rat-robbing divine thief had no doubts about what David said. Of course, the royal family would have a restriction. As the rat-robbing divine thief had been chased by the dark team master hand of the royal family ever since he stole the heavenly book of Holy Star, he didn't have time to read its contents and forgot about the existence of a restriction. It had truly been a rare chance, but if that was the case, he did not have any destiny with the heavenly book of Holy Star. It's a waste of time to go through so many hoops. The rat-robbing divine thief shook his head inside. You know, old senior, you captured me for no reason, and you even almost killed me. I haven't done anything, so I'm still a bit tired. Aren't you going to compensate me with something? David stretched out his hand without any hesitation. You didn't get anything, and you still want a reward? Damn, aren't you being too stingy? You're the one who tricked me, all right? The most despicable thing is that you don't even feel guilty. David changed his topic and said to Mouse, Senior Brother Henry, I don't think you need to think about it anymore. This censor isn't a good person. If you follow him, who knows when you might be tricked? You! The rat-robbing divine thief couldn't help but jump three feet into the air in anger. He said, Forget it. I'm afraid of you. I'll compensate you for this, so go to the side. Don't disturb me. The rat-robbing divine thief casually threw a gray bag to David. David caught it and opened it with curiosity. Inside the cloth bag were dozens of exquisite jade plates depicting exquisite and mysterious runes. Spirit-falling talismans? David's eyes lit up. Hump, spirit-falling talismans? What kind of low-level stuff is that? The rat-robbing divine thief said with disdain. Eh? Aren't these spirit-falling talismans? Brat, open your eyes wide and look carefully. These are all spirit fire talismans, heavenly lightning talismans, ice burst talismans, refined by a high-level pattern master. What kind of trash are you talking about with spirit-falling talismans? Can they compare to my soul symbols? Soul fire talismans, heavenly lightning talismans, and ice burst talismans? David's eyes couldn't help but light up when he heard these names. These runes were all used against core transforming stage rank experts. To David, they were all life-saving talismans. As for the rat-robbing divine thief who was using the space-breaking stage, the grade was a bit too low and basically couldn't be used, so it was most suitable to give them to David. The rat-robbing divine thief humped in pride at David's glowing eyes. Look at you. This is the kind thing I can do. There was no need to think to know that these words were meant for Mouse. David's mouth twitched as he said, Old Senior, you wouldn't hurt yourself with these charms, right? Man, are you done yet? Give them back to me if you don't want them. <laughs> that was a joke, a joke. How could David let go of all these treasures? He didn't hesitate to load his storage ring. The spirit-falling talisman that Liam had compensated him with was deliberately tampered with so that something would happen later. Naturally, what the rat-robbing divine thief had given to David wouldn't have those problems. Have you considered it yet, kid? The rat-robbing divine thief turned his gaze toward Mouse, his small eyes filled with a glimmer of expectation. Mouse let out a deep breath. He first looked at David and then said, Where are we going from here? Where the wind takes us, he <laughs> he. The corner of David's eyes twitched. He did live up to the name Rat Robbing Divine Thief. A smile appeared on Mouse's face. He no longer hesitated and nodded resolutely. I'll go with you. Even though David had already guessed Mouse's decision, hearing it aloud still gave him a strange feeling. Junior brother David, even though you're my junior, you've been taking care of me these past few days. I'm grateful to you. You're the first sincere friend I had in Imperial Capital City. Mouse looked at David seriously and clenched his fist with his right hand. One day, I will come back to find you. Please give my apologies to Michael, Little Lee, Zara, and the others. David's expression eased gradually. No matter what decision Mouse made, as a friend, he would only support 
and be happy for him. To catch the eye of an expert like the rat-robbing divine thief was a great opportunity that could only be found by chance. It was a blessing for Mouse. Hehe, <laughs> kid, when we meet again, I guarantee that this little mouse will beat you up, the rat-robbing divine thief said proudly to David. If that's the case, I'm happy for seeing your brother Henry too. Hmph, <laughs> don't believe me. Let me tell you, in a few years, he'll surpass you with just the words, Celestial Mouse Profound Body. David smiled and didn't argue. He had no reason to be unhappy about a strong rat. Let's go, little mouse. The rat-robbing divine thief turned around and left. Junior brother David, take care of yourself and be careful of Jace, Mouse said. I will. Take care of yourself. In the future, we'll drink and chat merrily. Definitely. Farewell. Take care. In the end, Mouse left. Kind people get a good reward, and this was probably the reward that the heavens gave him. In the Holy Star Dynasty, profound bodies created a huge physique. When he turned from mediocre into a genius, he'd be a force to be reckoned with. Watching the two of them disappear into the night, the corner of David's mouth curled up into a smile. Senior Brother Henry, take care. David was looking forward to the next time they'd meet. The mouse would no longer be an ordinary mouse, but a real sky-stealing mouse. The next morning, the gentle sunlight bathed the entire Holy Bell City in magnificent holy light, and the morning was filled with spirit energy. What did you say? Mouse left? Where did he go? Michael, Lee, Zara, and the rest looked at David in surprise. Wasn't this kind of thing happening too suddenly? No one could believe it. David smiled. Senior brother Henry met an expert senior. That senior took him in as a disciple and took him away. Man, what's going on? Where did this expert come from? Is he reliable? Mouse couldn't have been tricked by someone, right? No, that expert is a space-breaking stage-ranked top powerhouse, and he didn't force Mouse. He left voluntarily. David gave a few simple and vague explanations. Everyone was shocked and suspicious at the same time. An expert of the space-breaking stage was truly an extraordinary expert. While they were all amazed at the change of events, they couldn't help feeling sad about Mouse's sudden departure, especially Zara whose eyes were filled with a faint mist. David also roughly told mentor Jamal about this matter. Jamal was just surprised, so he didn't linger on it for too long. After all, Mouse's innate talent was average, and Heavenly Star Marshall House only lacked a single student. Gather. After Lara came out of her room, Jamal started to gather all the students. Today was the illusory spiritual bell's grand opening ceremony, and as the condition of the previous transaction, all of the high-level Marshall House students who came here had the qualifications to participate. Everyone, line up. Let's go to the sacred bell plaza. Episode 134 Four Emperors Holy Bell Square. Five high towers stood in the center of the plaza, exuding a majestic aura as though they were pillars that supported the heavens. The towers were arranged in different directions, north, south, west, and east. Four of them were secondary towers. The one in the center was the most majestic, almost a hundred meters tall. A giant bell was placed at the top of the highest tower, the giant bell's upper and lower body were about three to five meters wide, and its height was about ten meters. The mottled bronze, green, and rust covered the giant bell, and the ancient and desolate aura was continually released from the giant bell. With the erosion of time, a hundred years of wind and rain had been caused. This giant bell lost its former appearance. The sacred bell plaza was filled with people, other than the people from the Holy Bell City tribe, there were also some young students such as Fire Dragon, Wintervale, Giant Elephant, and Superior. 
Everyone was divided into different regions according to their respective academies. The scene was full of vigor and vitality. Various groups of people were gathered around a vast platform in the middle of the plaza. The platform was facing the five majestic towers. The faces of every person in Holy Bell City were pious and respectful. And the genius students of the various martial houses were looking forward to seeing just what kind of shockingly powerful strength the illusory spiritual bell possessed. The genius experts were eye-catching among the martial house teams. Wintervale Martial House's Jace, Consonance Martial House's Seth, Giant Elephant Martial House's Brian, Superior's June, Heavenly Star Martial House's Lexa, etc. All sorts of talented young men and women were bright stars among the sea of people. Elder Brother David! Not far away, Lilia waved her small hands at David happily, who was with the Heavenly Star Martial House. On her small wrist, she wore the bracelet David had given her. David revealed a warm smile and nodded his head. Jace crossed his arms in front of his chest. From the corner of his eye, he glanced at David with disdain. Beside him stood Jocelyn, who had a noble temperament, and Liam, Matt, and a few others. Behind Seth, the plum blossom sword genius of the Consonant Martial House, Monica, Eric, and Rick also looked at David with sinister and cold gazes. Seth's face, on the other hand, was calm and indifferent. He looked at the big bell on the high tower with interest. Wow, 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 so many beautiful women! Michael's thief-like eyes looked left and right among the Heavenly Star Marshal House's team. The Heavenly Star Marshal House's team had attracted the attention of many people. The reason was naturally Lara and Lexa, one of the four beauties of the Imperial Capital and one of the six great pearls. Boom! Suddenly, a wave of excited cheers rose from the other side of the square. Everyone's attention turned toward the direction of the Royal Marshal College. Michelle! She's one of the four emperors in the Imperial Capital. I didn't expect her to come as well. What's with today? Three of the four emperors of the imperial capital and one of the six great pearls came. Four out of the ten great beauties of the Holy Star Dynasty have appeared. Today's trip was not in vain. What caused the entire audience to be restless was a young girl standing beside Mentor Taylor from the Royal Marshall College. She wore a long, white, floral dress that was elegant and refined, and there were no flaws on her exquisite face. Wow! Michael's infatuation began to flare up again as he elbowed Lee. Michelle Barnes, of the four emperors in Imperial Capital, my favorite Michelle. Lee's eyes blazed after being stabbed by Michael. He glared at him fiercely and then stood far away. Look, crazy, you're not the only one who likes her. David was slightly astonished. He hadn't expected that Royal Marshall College's team would also come. Nor did he expect to see Michelle here. Even more so, he did not expect that she was actually one of the four empresses. Of course, there was nothing to be said about Michelle's looks. She was even prettier than Laura and June. Who's the one with the four emperors in the imperial capital? David asked casually. Really? You don't even know that? Michael said in disdain. If you hadn't been muttering all day by my side, I wouldn't have known about the four empresses and six great pearls. Then you have to thank me. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have seen so many beauties. I should be grateful to your grandparents. Hehe, <laughs> don't mention it. Let this king, handsome Michael, tell you what happened. One of the four emperors of the imperial capital is a princess and regent of the imperial family. Hmm? David was stunned. Regent. That's right, the first female regent in the history of the Holy Star Dynasty. Even His Majesty, the monarch, has to listen to her. David was slightly confused. Although he had grown up in the general's house, Harry had never told him, Brian, or June anything about the imperial court. It could be said that Harry didn't want his children to deal with the imperial government in the future. In addition, David wasn't really interested in that sort of thing, 
so he knew almost nothing about the imperial court's political affairs. David, don't listen to his nonsense. Zara shook her head and corrected Michael. There's another person called Quinn Camden among the four emperors in the imperial capital. She's the elder sister of the current son of heaven. Quinn Camden. David nodded and smiled without thinking about anything else. The patriarch of Holy Bell City, Gregory, and three other old men slowly ascended the dais below the tower. In an instant, the noisy atmosphere of the audience quieted down. Everyone, Gregory said in a deep but powerful voice as he swept the crowd with his turbid gaze while holding his walking stick in one hand. I don't want to waste any more time. I believe that your respective mentors have already explained it clearly. Whether or not you can obtain power from the illusory spiritual bell will depend on your own abilities. Now, let us activate the illusory spiritual bell. An emotional aura surged up within Gregory and the three elders beside him as his voice faded. A biting cold gust of wind blew out from the stage. The four of them spread out walking to the base of the four high towers. In the next moment, four bright golden beams of light flew out from the four of them and connected with the four high towers. Buzz, buzz. Under Gregory's lead, they released all kinds of complicated seal spells. As the aura in their bodies became stronger, the ground trembled, and then the four towers started to emit energy fluctuations. The undulations became stronger and stronger, and on the outer layer of the high tower, lines of silver-colored runes like lightning appeared out of nowhere. Episode 135 Tsunami Buzz, buzz. Under the guidance of the Patriarch of the Holy Bell City tribe, Gregory, a few old men attacked the towers with all kinds of complicated seal spells. As the auras exuded by the four of them grew stronger and stronger, the ground beneath everyone's feet started to tremble faintly. Then the high towers located in the east, south, west, and north started to emit energy fluctuations. Numerous silver-colored runes appeared like lightning on the surface of the tower's walls faster than the eye could see. Each rune was like a vine that contained a mysterious power that moved quickly toward the top of the tower. The four ancient, worn-out towers became mysterious and holy in an instant. They looked like four sacred objects shrouded in lightning patterns from afar, causing people to feel respect from the bottom of their hearts. The instructors and students of the various high-level martial houses revealed solemn and anticipatory expressions. All Holy Bell City clan members were pious, and their fiery eyes revealed reverence. Buzz, buzz. In just a few blinks of an eye, the resplendent and mysterious runes had covered all four of the secondary towers as if they were thunder columns. The seal spell that Gregory and the other three had created became faster, and the aura it emitted became stronger. The four of them kept their seal spells and shouted simultaneously, Illusory spiritual bell, activate! Rumble! Next, silver energy balls were formed at the top of the four pagodas. Then... Four light beams flew out of the energy balls and hit the highest tower simultaneously in the central region. A surging aura closed in like a tsunami, and the highest tower in the center erupted with a blinding golden holy light. The golden lines were like cracks on a dried riverbed. In an instant, they covered the entire central tower and extended upwards. Soon, they reached the giant bell at the top. Clang! At the ringing of a melodious gong, everyone's hearts trembled. This bell chime seemed to originate from the peak of the ancient and mysterious Azure Mountain, floating across the ocean, passing through the crowd of people and ultimately falling to their ears, seeping into the depths of their souls. It was an ancient feeling. This is... David squinted slightly 
a bit surprised. Under the astonished gazes of countless pairs of eyes, the rusted copper green iron light clock released a resplendent golden light pattern. The light patterns were shocked and the rust and emerald were quickly covered up. The crisscrossing light pattern turned into a dense and mysterious rune. Under everyone's shocked expressions, the illusory spiritual bell burst out with sun-like gold light. The resplendent golden light sprinkled downwards, directly projecting onto the central stage area below the holy tower. In an instant, the area enveloped by the light scattered by the illusory spiritual bell became like a holy veil. The surface of the stage became covered with golden scales that flickered as if there was a layer of golden dust. Patriarch Gregory and the other three elderly men looked like they were bathing in the holy light, and their aged state was swept away. Their wrinkled faces relaxed, and their eyes filled with an indescribable spirit. Everyone! Gregory's eyelids lifted as he swept his gaze across the crowd in front of him. His voice was loud and clear like thunder. The illusory spiritual bell has been activated. Whether or not you obtain its power is up to your own ability. Gregory paused, and he raised his hand and shouted, Everyone, please come on stage. As soon as he spoke, the students of the higher martial houses, who had long since lost control of their emotions, swarmed like bees to the center stage, enveloped in golden light. In this situation, Emperor Wu, Winter Veil, Fire Dragon, Mighty Elephant, Superior, and Heavenly Star Martial House were relatively standard in terms of martial houses. There wasn't the slightest urgency. A total of eight high-level martial houses had come to Holy Bell City. The total number of genius students was around 900. Of course, the Holy Bell City Plaza was wide, and the power of the illusory spiritual bell could cover a maximum of 2,000 people. When everyone gathered together, they did not feel crowded at all. All sorts of talented students got on stage one after another and sat down on the platform. Golden rays of light sprinkled on everyone's bodies, resembling layers of thin gauze. Humph, a group of robbers. A young girl from the Holy Bell City tribe scolded coldly. There were quite a few people by her side who revealed expressions of disgust. In their eyes, the illusory spiritual bell was a treasure that belonged to the Holy Bell City, and sharing its power with these outsiders felt disgusting. Stop talking. This is the bargaining chip, Trimus said softly. Humph, should I say it's not good for us to stay in Holy Bell City? Why are you going outside? Travis didn't answer, and there was a detailed look in his eyes. He understood the Holy Bell City well. The people who truly wanted to stay here their entire lives were few and far between, and there was practically no one who didn't yearn for the outside world, including Travis himself. Since he couldn't hold on, he might as well let them go. Stop arguing. Patriarch Gregory walked in front of Travis and the rest with the aid of a walking stick. As long as you become stronger, the Holy Bell City will be able to survive in this world forever. After you leave this place, I only hope that you can find your way back. If he were to leave here in the future, he would still be able to find his way back. Such a simple sentence couldn't help but cause the hearts of all the Holy Bell City's young generation to tremble. Travis clenched his fists and said solemnly, Patriarch, I will never forget this place that gave birth to and raised me. Ha ha, good. Gregory nodded in relief, then turned his gaze to an old teenage girl with dark skin and wild beauty and said, Lily, Travis, Currently, in the entire Holy Bell City, only the two of you have the best talent. Don't lose to these outsiders. Yes, sir, Travis answered seriously. Lily merely nodded her head indifferently and didn't say anything. However, the faint pride of not admitting defeat flashed through her beautiful black eyes. Go, Gregory said sincerely. 
Many of the young men and women of the Holy Bell City tribe also sat down on the empty tables. Geniuses from the various higher martial houses quickly took over the open space on the stage. Don't disappoint me, Royal Marshal College's Taylor's eyes smiled as she spoke. Got it, mentor and sister Taylor, Michelle replied with a light smile. Her eyes were bright and her teeth were white. She looked extremely beautiful. Wintervale Marshal House's Jace led the way steadily, with Jocelyn, Aaron, and a few others following him to the stage. Seth of the Plum Blossom Sword from the Consonance Marshal House also looked sharp and fierce. Brian, June, and the others followed suit. Finally, the Heavenly Star Marshal House's Lexa, Pierce, Mitchell, and other genius students entered the area covered by the illusory spiritual bell's light. Let's go over as well, Michael said, laughing. Lee, Zara, and the others followed closely behind. David walked behind them with a slightly absent-minded look, as if he was not concentrating at all. Why was he like that? Why he was like that, even he didn't know. Buzz, buzz. When David stepped onto the stage, enveloped in golden rays of light, He immediately felt a strange feeling hard to describe. That exquisite light seemed to pass through his skin and fuse into his limbs and bones, and his entire body was covered with a faint luster. Huh? Why are you here too? All of a sudden, a sweet female voice entered David's ears. He was stunned for a moment, and then the face of an unparalleled beauty appeared before his eyes. Miss... A hint of surprise flashed across David's face. Michelle's eyes had a tinge of gentleness. I forgot to ask you the other time. Which academy are you from? Heavenly Star. Heavenly Star. Michelle seemed a little surprised, but her face didn't show the same expression of disdain as the others. Thank you for what you did last time. We'll talk about it when we have time. David smiled gently and nodded. Many people around them witnessed the scene of the exchange between Michelle and David. Mother, how did this guy get to know Michelle? Are you done yet? Michael was making a fuss, and his teeth were itching from hatred. First it was June, then Robin, and now Michelle. Even Laura was David's mentor. Every beautiful woman was fated to be with David. As an idol, junior brother David is a role model for men. Lee's face was full of admiration as he said casually. June is his sister, Laura is his mentor, and Michelle is someone he knows. Say, do you think Quinn Camden, one of the four emperors in Imperial Capital, knows senior brother David as well? Cut it out. Quinn Camden lives in Imperial City. So how could David possibly meet her? Michael snickered. If he knows Quinn Camden, I'll drink a bowl of horse piss. You are really cruel to yourself. You seem to be a little too pleased with yourself. Don't you know your limits? A frivolous and harsh voice sounded out as a slender figure in high spirits walked past David. David's eyes narrowed, and he retorted coldly. You have your own business wherever you go. Can't you stop wandering around in front of me, young Master Weston? A gust of cold wind quietly swept across the stage and the air seemed to be filled with the smell of gunpowder. Episode 136 High Towers Manifestation You have your own business wherever you go, so can't you stop wandering around in front of me, young Master Weston? A chilling wind blew across the stage. David and Jace's sudden encounter caused a series of invisible sparks to appear in the air. The students of the genius martial houses seated in the plaza all turned their gazes in their direction. Brian and June looked at each other and simultaneously made their preparations. If Jace dared to touch David, they would not hesitate to act. Of course, in this situation, it was impossible to make a move. As expected, Jace did not release any of his power, but a disdainful smile appeared on his face. 
soon you won't be able to see me. The meaning of this sentence was that the dead don't see anything. Jace was obviously threatening him. David smiled and shrugged, and he didn't seem to mind at all. Humph! Jace sneered and didn't say anything else as he continued to walk past David. Behind Jace followed Jocelyn, Aaron, and Liam. From beginning to end, Jocelyn's gaze remained fixed in front of her, completely ignoring David. When Aaron walked past David, her clear eyes were filled with worry. David smiled and nodded at her, indicating that she didn't have to worry about anything. However, after they passed by, a dense, David's eyes became cold. Heh, <laughs> that guy has offended quite a few people. Rick, Eric, and Monica, who were standing behind Seth of the Plum Flower Sword, experienced a bit of shade and fraud. Seth narrowed his eyes and said with interest, He's not bad. Big brother, why are you always praising others? Monica said with dissatisfaction. It's quite rare for novice students to have such courage and insight. But if his strength is insufficient, it would just be arrogance and stupidity. Seth replied slowly. Heh. Rick replied strangely. Then he must be stupid. However, as they were ridiculing David behind his back, they forgot that a few months ago, they'd almost lost their lives to David's demon-slaying spear. Not long after, the young generation of the Holy Bell City clan and the geniuses from the various great martial houses all sat down on the empty ground. Five ancient high towers stood in front of them, exuding an aura comparable to a mountain. The flickering runes gave people the impression of unshakable might. The illusory spiritual bell was suspended at the top of the central tower emitting a golden brilliance like the sun. Golden splendor enveloped the central platform below, bathing the 1,300 talented men and women in the holy light as their bodies were covered in a faint luster. Everyone, you can begin. Like I said, whether or not you obtain the power that our ancestors stored in the illusory spiritual bell will depend on your abilities. Chief Gregory said loudly, then the other three elderly men left the stage and returned to the crowd of the Holy Bell City around the stage. Only a few instructors stood around the stage with the rest of the martial houses. What exactly is the secret behind this illusory spiritual bell? Jamal tried to ask Laura. Laura pondered for a moment. Then she lifted her beautiful eyes as she said, It should be the inheritance power of Patriarch Josiah. The highest level inheritance is most likely related to the rune's power. The rune's power? Jamal couldn't help but squint his eyes as he mumbled to himself. Time passed slowly, and the entire Sacred Bell Plaza fell silent. On the platform below the Holy Tower, more than a thousand talented young men and women sat like boulders. Under the enveloping of the golden holy light, their bodies shone with a dazzling brilliance. Everyone calmly perceived the power that came from the illusory spiritual bell and tried to merge it with their consciousness to sense it. However, based on what Patriarch Gregory had said, it was not easy to obtain the power of the illusory spiritual bell. Sure enough, after a short period of time, a ding sound rang out, and a wave of faint air came from the stage, following which... A young man was the first to awaken from his state of perception. His expression was filled with a deep sense of confusion and desolation. He had failed, and he was the first one. Everyone only has one chance to sense the situation. The second time won't have any effect, Patriarch Gregory said lightly below the stage. With Gregory's words, the golden light from the illusory spiritual bell faded from the young man. It was especially dim and obvious among the surrounding crowd of people. So that's how it is. The giant elephant martial house instructor Sean nodded his head in understanding. Afterward, the young man walked down the stage disappointed and returned to the area where his martial house was. He was a student of the Lightning Martial House. Buzz! Soon after, the second person finished sensing their surroundings. It was the consonant Marshall House's immediate result. The third, fourth, 
and fifth young students had all awoken from their sensing state. The golden radiance that the illusory spiritual bell had scattered on their bodies disappeared one after another. I didn't sense anything, but my head is still dizzy. There's clearly nothing here. Yes, I vaguely saw a mouth of giant bell. Are you for real? It's true, but just as I was about to approach it, I woke up. It seems like I'm not destined to be an inheritor of this illusory spiritual bell. Listening to the students' discussion, the people of the Holy Bell City all revealed scoffing smiles. Illusory spiritual bell was the treasure of their clan, and they were the clearest about the power contained within. Its power was not something people could easily perceive. As they mocked these outsiders, the people from Holy Bell City were also paying attention to Travis. Although Lily's situation was to share the power of the illusory spiritual bell with others, they definitely couldn't lose to anyone else. In fact, the instructors in charge of the various martial houses also had the same thought. In some cases, it was a contest. The number of people who had woken up continued to increase as more and more people returned to the arena. It was as if they had rushed through a scene and gathered the people on the stage before coming down. In less than half an hour, only half of the number of people on the platform remained. No one had expected such an astonishing failure rate. It's too difficult. I obviously touched that golden bell, but I still can't. Patriarch Gregory, how exactly do we perceive the power of the illusory spiritual bell? A young student with good talent couldn't help but ask. He originally thought that with his talent and strength, he should be able to experience it, but he hadn't expected to fail so early. Everyone around them turned to look at Gregory when they heard the question. Gregory nodded his head his old eyes slightly narrowed. If you want to sense the power of the illusory spiritual bell, exceptional talent is not the most important thing. The most important thing is your mind and having mental fortitude that surpasses others. Then may I ask, clan leader, how can I succeed in sensing the illusory spiritual bell's power? Very simple. Buzz, buzz. Before Gregory could finish his sentence, a strange energy fluctuation suddenly spread across the stage. Everyone was shocked, and all of their gazes swept toward a spot, only to see that above a young lady, a restless and vast aura surged, and the golden radiance was like a whirlpool, quickly converging above her. In the blink of an eye, an illusory golden bell figure appeared, shocking everyone. This is... In a split second, the crowd below the stage lost their calm. However, the Royal Marshal College eyes lit up and a faint surprise flashed across her face. Wow, it's the junior sister from Royal Marshal College. What's going on? The entire audience was in an uproar, and then the entire stage was once again filled with a wave of biting cold arms as the majestic golden holy light surged like a flowing river. In the next moment, above Jace, Seth, Lexa, and June, there was the image of a golden bell. The shadow of the golden bell above all five of them was one to two meters wide and three meters high. An obscure and restless force was released, causing the air to vibrate faintly. Does this count as a success? The people below the stage looked at each other in dismay and doubt. Patriarch Gregory, however, was frowning slightly as he looked toward the Holy Bell City's younger generation. You little kids, you can't lose to these outsiders. Whoosh! A similarly shocking power rose up above the heads of Travis and Lily, who were in the Holy Bell City tribe area. The space trembled slightly as the holy light condensed like a divine sun, following which a mysterious illusion of a golden bell condensed a few meters above Travis and Lily. The phantom of the golden bell floated above them as the silver rune flowed slowly, giving off the feeling of a giant golden lantern hanging in the sky, a mysterious and powerful energy being transmitted. Looking at the two bright golden bell phantoms, Patriarch Gregory and the rest of the Holy Bell City's crowd heaved a sigh of relief. 
Fortunately, they weren't that much weaker than the genius students from other academies. Episode 137 Inside Golden Light Buzz, buzz. Michelle, Chase, Seth, Lexa, June, Travis, and Lily. In the blink of an eye, a few meters above each of their heads, an illusory image of a golden bell appeared. On top of the bell wall, a bright silver rune flashed like a bolt of lightning and hidden mysterious power was emitted. Was this considered a success? Everyone in the audience was stunned and looked toward the Holy Bell City Patriarch, Gregory. Gregory's reply confirmed everyone's thoughts. As long as we condense the bell shadow, we can successfully perceive the power of the illusory spiritual bell. Wow! The young students around the arena looked amazed. If that was the case, Michelle was the first to have successfully sensed the illusory spiritual bell's power. Even Jace and Seth, the two prodigies, were a step behind her. As for Lexa and June, the two were ranked in the fourth and fifth place, respectfully, which wasn't surprising. After all, in the imperial capital city, they were quite famous for their talents. Clan leader Gregory, may I ask, what kind of inheritance power would a person who has successfully sensed the power of an illusory spiritual bell receive? A young student asked the question that everyone wanted to know. Gregory smiled indifferently, shook his head slightly, and said, Patriarch Josiah's power inside the illusory spiritual bell is amazing. They might be able to obtain the special occult art seal method or pass on a portion of their strength and raise their cultivation in a short amount of time. Of course, I have already informed your instructors about Patriarch Josiah's status as Spiritual Pattern Master. Spirit Level Pattern Master, a transcendent existence above, above high level pattern master. There was only one spiritual pattern master in the entire Holy Star dynasty. Everyone in the crowd was filled with envy. If anyone could obtain the inheritance of a pattern master's power, then it would truly be enviable. As time passed, the situation on the altar enveloped by the golden light Constantly changing. More and more young geniuses were successful in condensing the illusion of the golden bell and smoothly communicating with and sensing the illusory spiritual bell. However, there were even more people who ended up in failure. After that, they shook their heads and smiled bitterly unwilling to accept the outcome, and walked down the stage with mixed feelings of disappointment. Only a little over a hundred talented young men and women remained on the stage in the blink of an eye. Aside from one person, all the others had the image of a resplendent golden bell floating above their heads. The person left was none other than David. Strange, that shouldn't be the case. Mentor Jamal, who was in the Heavenly Star Martial House team, mumbled to himself in confusion. With that kid's talent, he shouldn't fall behind. The other teachers from the other academies were also puzzled. Even Michael, Lee, and Zara had successfully communicated with the illusory spiritual bell. As the most outstanding newcomer this year, David should not have been at this level. Out of the 1,000 and 300 people present. Only a little over a hundred had successfully sensed the illusory spiritual bell's power. 
less than 200. This probability of failure was beyond anyone's expectations. And at that moment, David, the only person on the stage unable to form the Golden Bell image, stood out like a sore thumb. So this year's first place for rookies is actually mediocre. I thought he was going to be amazing. He should get off the stage soon. A few discordant voices sounded from the surroundings, and many people had to tease smiles on their faces. Many of them wanted to cheer themselves up after their own failures. They didn't know that they were no better than he was. Of course, because David's reputation had risen greatly recently. His actions had once been eye-catching, which was why he had become everyone's target. Listening to the crowd's mocking laughter, Laura silently watched the young figure on the stage. Compared to the others, Laura didn't think David had that much ability, because at that moment, his breathing was even and steady, not the slightest bit hurried. Is this guy putting on an act? Was he awake long ago and couldn't bear to come down? Rick, who was with the Consonants Marshall House, had his arms crossed in front of his body, and his tone was filled with ridicule. If he wakes up, the gold will fade away, Monica said. He probably never entered the state of perception from the beginning. Ha 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 ha, that's possible. A few of them burst into laughter. However, a violent aura was released from the platform at that moment. Buzz! The golden light above David's head surged. Brilliant rays of light lingered around and golden light spiraled around it. An instant, a brilliant image of a golden bell appeared in midair. This? With the bell's appearance, everyone in the audience shut their mouths. The smiles on Rick's, Monica's, and the others' faces froze and were replaced with gloomy and cold expressions. The people from Heavenly Star Marshall House all, all let out a sigh of relief. Mentor Jamal shook his head and laughed. This guy, was he doing this on purpose? Whoosh! A burst of dazzling white shine flashed by, and David's perception became clearer. In the hazy, dark space, the strange energy waves were like ripples on the water's surface. David felt as if he had walked into an unknown world. What's that? David looked up ahead in surprise. Nearby, an ancient-looking giant bell was floating in midair. It was a gigantic golden bell, about a hundred meters tall and dozens of meters wide. Standing in front of David, it was like a majestic mountain peak. The golden bell had a gentle, gauzy glow, making it seem sacred in this hazy space. With some excitement and confusion, David walked forward. There was a circle of white ripples under his feet with every step he took. When David walked in front of the giant bell, he could clearly see the mysterious rune above the bell wall. One rune after another appeared like the crazed brushwork of a master. They were like flying dragons and dancing phoenixes, revealing a majestic aura. The densely packed runes were all around the giant bell and seemed to come from the hands of the Holy Spirit. A thought suddenly appeared in David's mind. He solemnly extended his right palm and gently placed it on top of the bell wall. The surging strength of true essence was injected into the giant bell through David's palm. With David's palm as the center, a series of mysterious runes were lit up in the next moment. Bright rays of light blossomed from the runes, causing them to tremble. And when they lit up, the air was filled with densely packed silver light spots. The specks of light were like the sun's red glow as they quickly entered David's body. Immediately after, David felt a strange power in his body. This power became more and more powerful, and it continuously flowed through the various meridians in his body. David could feel that his strength of true essence increased by quite a bit. So that's how it is. David began to understand what the illusory spiritual bell's hidden power was. His heart tightened 
and once again, he used a stream of strength of true essence to pour into the golden giant bell. With the strength of true essence influx, more runes began to light upon the bell wall. Streams of bright runes were like growing vines, full of vitality. Holy Bell Square Over a hundred talented young men and women were immersed in the state of sensing the illusory spiritual bell's power. At the peak of the bell tower, the illusory spiritual bell was like the sun, enveloping the entire platform. The image of the golden bell floating above everyone's heads was like a huge, peculiar lantern. At a glance, everyone realized that each shadow of the golden bell that everyone condensed was of a different quality. Some were deep and solid, close to the real thing, and some were loose, transparent, and different colors. Crack! A slight cracking sound shocked everyone in the crowd. The illusion of a golden bell above one of the giant elephant Marshall House students started to crack without any warning. Numerous deep cracks spread on the bell wall like a spider web. Following that, with a crisp bang, and under the bewildered gaze of everyone present, the golden bell image shattered, turning into golden fragments that filled the sky before dissipating into the air. At almost the same time, the student woke up from his state of perception, and the radiance enveloping his body faded away. Clearly, his perception had ended. But what was different from the previous people was that this person had successfully obtained the power of the illusory spiritual bell, and that was the end of it. The moment he stepped off the stage, a crowd of busybodies surrounded him. How is it? What kind of power did you get? He only laughed and shook his head. An occult art seal. What occult art seal? Tell me about it. Buzz, buzz. Crack. The golden bell images were shattered on the stage, and the talented young men and women regained their consciousness after receiving the illusory spiritual bell's power. Everyone in the audience watched with envious and curious eyes before they all gathered around. How is it? What benefits do you get? <laughs> it's a secret. Damn, what happened to the illusory spiritual bell? Hurry up and tell me. I sensed an ancient giant bell, and I needed to light up the rune above it to obtain its power. The more the rune lights up, the more power you receive. So that's how it is. The stronger the rune above the giant bell, the clearer and more solid the outside illusion of the golden bell is. That's right. Everyone's gazes swept across Jace, Seth, Michelle, and the others. They were able to determine the level of achievement they had based on the condensed image of the golden bell that they had. Episode 138 Destiny Decides He merged his consciousness into the illusory spiritual bell and sensed an ancient giant bell. If he could light up the rune above the giant bell with his own strength, he would be able to obtain the power within it. The more the rune lit up, the greater the power he would receive. Similarly, the phantom of the golden bell conjured outside became more solid and clear. So that's how it is. In other words, we can determine who has the brightest rune from the density of the bell above them. You can think of it that way. The crowd below the stage roughly understood the illusory spiritual bell's operation process from the crowd gradually waking up and everyone's gazes swept across the golden bell phantoms created by the famous geniuses including Michelle, Jace, and Seth. The Golden Bell's simulacrum was strongest for Emperor Wu's Michelle, Wintervale's Jace, Fire Dragon's Seth, Heavenly Star's Lexa, and Superior's June. Furthermore, Holy Bell City's Travis, Lily, and Sean did not show any weakness. Everyone else in the audience gasped in surprise. Geniuses are geniuses! 
No matter what, those with high potential were always brilliant. As time passed, the golden bell images that the geniuses conjured became more solid, and the silver light patterns could be clearly seen. However, even more, people had their golden bell images shattered. The number of people on the stage gradually decreased, but the more time passed, the happier and more excited the people who came down from the stage were. Naturally, there was no need to explain the reason. It seemed they had gained quite a lot. With the heavenly star Marshall House, Zara, Lee, Pierce, Mitchell, and Yolanda had already returned to their respective seats. Little Lee, what did you get? Zara asked curiously. Lee gave a proud smile and answered mysteriously, Hee hee, confidential. Tisk, how mysterious. Come on, tell me. Then beg me. If you beg me, I'll tell you. Get lost. Mentor Jamal, standing at the side, looked at the excited students and gave a faint smile. Lexa, David, and Michael were the Heavenly Star students still on the stage. Among them, Lexa was a far cry from the other two. The golden bell image she condensed was extremely close to reality, not one bit weaker than the geniuses of the other Marshall House. That guy Michael is really good at managing things at a critical time, Zara said. I reckon he'll be coming down soon. I wonder how long David will last. In my opinion, senior brother David should at least be able to make it to the top three, Lee said as he clenched his fist. Hey, top three? Forget it. Mitchell's voice pierced their ears. You guys underestimate the strength of the illusory spiritual bell. The rune above the giant bell can't just be lit up by luck. Mitchell was one of the top students among mentor Lara's direct disciples. Since he was stronger than Pierce, Lee and Zara didn't dare to say anything else. However, Zara still thought in her heart, don't underestimate David, just wait and see. Even though David's cultivation was only at the sixth level of the essence mastery, Zara still felt that nothing would be able to stop him. Both she and Lee had inexplicable confidence in David. Two hours passed quickly, and only 20-odd people were left on the stage. The image of the golden bell floating above each person's head was extremely realistic, almost exactly the same as the actual golden bell. It would be difficult to see the difference if you didn't look closely. And the most surprising thing was that out of the 20 or so people, four were this year's novice students. Those four were David, Michael, Jocelyn, and Aaron. At Wintervale Marshall House, Jocelyn's talent had already been acknowledged by the Academy's higher-ranked instructors. However, under the influence of her elder sister, Aaron had always kept a low profile. Everyone knew that Jocelyn had a beautiful and cute younger sister, but they ignored Aaron's equally high talent. Jocelyn and junior sister Aaron are pretty good. They're much stronger than us, a student from Wintervale Marshall House said. Hehe, <laughs> that's only natural. How could a person who catches brother Jace's eye be mediocre? Matt smiled and said with interest. As he said this, he glanced at David with a little disdain. I knew about Junior Sister Jocelyn's talent, but I never thought Junior Sister Aaron would be so powerful. I didn't think of that either. The Wintervale Marshall House's instructor, Reginald, also looked surprised. These students had been recruited by him from Oakburn City. Jocelyn and Aaron were excellent, and Reginald was naturally happy, but he was more concerned about David beside them. What height would David reach next? Crack! Suddenly, the sound of breaking came from the stage, and the illusion of the golden bell above Michael cracked open. When the cracks covered the entire bell wall, the golden bell turned into pieces of crystal pyroclast that filled the sky. Michael woke up from the shock, and a biting cold vigor burst out from his body. The Heavenly Star Marshall House crowd burst into applause and cheers. Michael, good job! You're amazing! Michael's eyebrows twitched slightly. He smiled with a hint of pride as he walked down from the stage. Buzz, buzz. At about the same time, the illusion of the golden bell above Jocelyn split open with countless dense lines, and along with a surging force, 
the sparkling and translucent fragments spread out in all directions like a halo. The Wintervale Marshall House people applauded and cheered. At this point, everyone's performance on the stage was enough to make people envious and amazed. Congratulations, Junior Sister Jocelyn. Ha <laughs> ha, outstanding. She's amazing. Jocelyn looked on proudly, listening to the cheers from below the stage. When she looked at Aaron, who was still in the state of perception, a sliver of astonishment flashed across her face. She hadn't expected Aaron to last longer than she did. Of course, everyone understood. The length of endurance mattered less than the solidity of the Golden Bell illusion. Aaron was likely slower at lighting up the rune, so she had yet to wake up. After all, her Golden Bell phantom didn't seem as solid as the one that Jocelyn had conjured.